Hi, and welcome to another Excel training video. Now today what we're going to be taking a look at is in fact Power Query. And something that would be very, very useful in Power Query is to be able to relate the query to a relative path to the file in which the query is written. Now the reason this is particularly useful is if you are working on different machines with a shared drive, a shared folder like a OneDrive for example, um, your path to that OneDrive, to the shared folder, might be different on different machines. And it certainly is if there are different people using that shared folder. Now, if you have the file with the query also in the OneDrive, then it's fairly easy for it to relate to the other files that it's looking for using a relative path. Now, if you're used to using VBA, um, this is very easy because you just say this workbook.path and then concatenate that with the other part, other file paths. Um, what we're going to do here is see how we can cheat within Power Query to do a very similar thing. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up my Excel file. And you'll notice I've already saved this as an XLSX called a query path. Um, what I'm going to do now is actually use this sheet here just to build up my actual query path and I'm then going to give it a name. So the first thing is to say <clears throat> it equals a cell property file name. So I'm going to say the file name and it comes through saying not just the path but the, the file name and the sheet name as well. Now we don't want all of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for that character there which is the square bracket. Now I'm going to do this using a search. So equals search what am I searching for? Well, I'm searching for the square bracket and I'm searching for it in that cell there. So it tells me 31. So that's the position of the square bracket. Now I actually want all of that minus one <clears throat> because I want everything to the left of it. So now I'm going to say equals left, the left of that comma my 30. So that gives me my actual path and that will be regenerated wherever I move this file to. So now down here I'm going to put in just a file name in the same location as my file is currently saved. So I have a file in there called 2015 CSV and so now I'm going to concatenate the two together just to give me the file path and the file name. So this is going to be the file path and name that I'm going to build a query to. Now, the reason I've done this in multiple steps is down here, I'm going to put in another file path and I'm going to build my, sorry, a folder path and I'm going to build this for getting all files from a folder as well, just to show you the difference between the two. Um, bear in mind it will have different syntax for a CSV as it does for an Excel file or for any other types of file. So each file type will have its unique um, way of writing the DAX. So let's have a look and see what we're going to do now. Well, we're going to build a query to open that file. Then we're going to edit that file to equal what's in this cell. But when we refer to this cell, we can't just refer to it as A6. So we're going to give it a name. So I've called it my file and I press enter. And I'm just in the habit of checking to make sure that it has been named properly. OK, what I'm going to do now is write that query. So data from text or CSV and where it is, well there it is, import. <clears throat> now when it eventually opens up, normally I'd go into transform. For the sake of this, I'm just straight away going to go into load two. We're just going to check and uh, connection and add to data model. OK. As I was saying, we just want to check that it does load correctly. And then when we move it to another location, we want to check that it also loads correctly. Um, initially, it's not going to. And then we'll put the CSV file in that same location and then we'll see that it does work. OK, so we've got a couple of thousand rows loaded. Now that's not it, because we need to now go into this query and edit the actual query so that it doesn't point to the file that's been hard coded in. It points to the variable, which is the named range inside the worksheet. So I want to come in here, we work through that. Let's go straight into the advanced editor. And the reason we do that is because we actually want to put in a new line there above everything. And we're going to put in a new variable as well. So let's call this my, uh, what did we call it? My path. I called it my file. 
So my file equals, now it equals something in the Excel workbook. So I'm going to say e Excel dot, and I get all the options up, and it's the current workbook. So that's what I want. So the Excel current workbook, open close brackets. Now, what do we want? Well, we want something which is a named range. So I'm going to give it my array symbols and then my square brackets for my named range. And I'm going to say name equals, and it equals my file. Now that's the actual address, and it's just returning a cell reference there at the moment. So we want to do something from that. So we actually want the content of that. So we want the content of that cell address, and that's a bit like um, using indirect directly in Excel. Now, uh, there may be more than one things because that's just a, a reference to a range at the moment. So we need to say from row number such and such and from column number such and such. So we're going to say from uh, array item number zero, and that's the first thing in the array. And now we're going to say from column one. Now we only have one column, so that's going to work anyway. Now what you must remember to do is put the close comma at the end of each line of DAX. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to replace that reference to the file with my file. And when I come down here done, it should go ahead and still work. Okay, so I'm going to close and load and we'll see that's working over there. It's loading the data and it does now actually find the reference using that cell there. Okay, let's just save this. So I'm going to do F12 to save. I should have just done Control S, but I'll go ahead and replace that. And now I'm going to close this file. <clears throat> now the reason I closed that file is because here I have that. No, it's not there. It's elsewhere on my desktop. It is called query path. So I'm going to take that file and I'm going to put it into. I've got a new location. Now the new location at the moment is empty. So I've pasted in my query path into the new location. Now I'm going to open the file from there. Now it shouldn't find anything. It shouldn't be able to find that query because it's looking in the same path that it's in. So when I go into my enabled content and I go into my queries and connections I should have a query here that can't load so when I refresh it it should come up with an error and it can't find it so here's the error it could not find the file and there we go so why couldn't it find it well because it's looking for it in the same place that this one is stored and there is no file in there called 2015 CSV. So let's simply copy that file into the location. And now we go back into our query and just refresh it again. And it now loads the data. So that would simulate actually taking a folder, renaming the folder, moving the folder, storing it on OneDrive with different access paths to that OneDrive folder. So that will work for pretty much everybody. Let's now just have a look at how we can do the same thing for a folder. So I'm going to do a very similar thing. Um, I'm going to do it back on the other file again, and then copy back into this location. So I'll just do Control W to close that one. And I'm going to do it from the query path that's on my desktop, rather than the one that's in the new folder. Now down here, we want to get everything from on my desktop, I want everything from that folder there. Transactions by year, 2015 to 2018. So I just simply click on it twice and copy it. And now I can go back into here and paste that into there. And I'll just paste it in as text. Okay, so it just says transactions by year, 2015 to 2018. Now that is a folder path. 
Now, down here, I'm going to concatenate the two together again. So this equals my overall path to this workbook and the folder path that I've just put in there. So again, you'll notice this is a folder path. It doesn't need the slash at the end. Excel will recognize that it is a folder. So now, just like before, we need to name this. So I'm going to call this my folder. And again, I just check to make sure that it has actually named properly. So my folder, and that's perfect. So that's working. Now, just like before, we're going to create a path um, and a query to the folder. So I'm going to say get data from file from folder. And you'll notice that the syntax is slightly different this time. So I'm going to browse to the path of the folder. It's on my desktop and it's that one there. <clears throat> Click OK. Now I'm just going to do a few things that I will pretty much always do on uh, when I'm getting data from a folder. And the first is to check the extensions, make sure the file types are coming in the correct file types. And you'll notice here I've put in some uh, spurious file types. Now you always need to either uppercase or lowercase the extension. I generally lowercase them. And then do a filter. And again, always use text filter equals. And then you can choose from the drop down if you want to. And in fact, it's the best choice to choose from the drop down. Click OK. Now I'm going to say I don't want any of the others. So remove the other columns and expand that out or combine. <clears throat> now I've just done all that because it's some, something I would generally do when working on a folder. I didn't need to do that for this example. So I'm going to say OK. And this now should give me several thousand items when I close and load this. So same again, I'm going to do close and load two. I'm going to load it just as a connection and just in the data model, just so that we can actually count how many we've had loaded so we can test it and see if it's working. And then again, we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to create this named range. We're going to refer to it as a variable from the query. OK, when our query's actually come up, OK, so we've got nearly 11,000 there. So let's double click on this query to go into it to edit it. We're going to do the same again. We're going to go view. We're going to go straight into the advanced editor. And we're going to click at the top. And we're going to go back there and put in a new variable. So this is going to be folder path or my folder. And e equals Excel. And it's current workbook again. And again, open those brackets. Now, what do we want? We want the array and the name thing within the array. So name equals my folder. And it's important that that my folder goes in speech marks. And now outside there, just like we did before, um, we need to talk about the content of that array. And we need the array value zero, and then we need column one. And again, we must remember to put the comma at the end there. And now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take again everything within the quotes there, including the quotes, and replace it with my folder. And then hit done. And it's now recalculating all of these. And it's come up with the same answer. So now I can just say close and load. And we'll see that that's actually recalculating or reassessing, reevaluating to see if it does work. And it has worked. So I'm going to save this file. Once I've saved it, I'm going to close the file. And let's just have a look here now. So Power Query, sorry, Query Path is that's the one that I put in there originally. So now I'm going to take the other one off the desktop. So down here I've got query path. I'm going to copy this one and then I'm going to put that into my new folder or new location. So I'm going to paste that one in there. And the first query, which is looking for the 2015 
that should work. The second one, which is looking for files in that folder, that should not work. So let's have a look at the queries. So the first one should work. And when we say refresh, the second one doesn't work because it can't find the folder. Okay, so it couldn't find the folder because it's looking for a folder in the same relative path. So let's go back to here. Um, may as well just minimize that down for now. Transaction, that's the folder with the path. So I've copied it in there. Now we go back to our Excel. We can refresh that again and it should now find, but now it's looking for the one in the folder that it itself is in. Okay, I know this can be very frustrating for a lot of people, and that's why I put together a video on it. I really do hope it's been useful for you. It's not the perfect solution. The perfect solution would be a simple code um, using fields, so the ability to use fields within our query that use this workbook as being the workbook that has the query loaded in it. That'd be a lot easier. I don't think there's any danger of that coming anytime soon. So this is a great workaround for now. Thank you for listening and I hope it's been useful.